While I was hard at work editing my next video, Valve had unveiled and launched the Steam Games Festival of February 2021. It's a one-week celebration that allows players to try out various game demos, chat with developers, watch live streams, and learn more about hundreds of upcoming Steam releases, most of them being indie games. The event lasts from February 3rd to February 9th, so go check it out. I've decided to put my editing on hold to jump in on this one and make a video about it. Now I know that covering every single game of the festival would be impossible, so I've compiled a list of 21 titles that have managed to pique my interest in one way or another. I will leave a link to the Steam Festival and the store page of each game demo that I cover in the description below. Please enjoy! So the first game on my list is Aerial Knights Never Yield. It was the first game that I saw uh, on the front page of the Steam Festival, so it's only right that I cover it first. Uh, it looks like an endless runner that we've grown pretty accustomed to, on, uh, especially on the mo mobile platform, but I don't see many of those on PC, and the art style looked very interesting. And I'm digging the music so far, so let's dig in and see how this game plays. Oh. Okay, I guess I timed that right. Or not. <laughs> the timing seems a bit off, but maybe that's just me. Oh, okay, it's just prompting you very early. So the directional inputs are for sliding in or jumping in various directions. Let's see. And I can hold okay. Okay, it's so it's not a dodge, it's just a directional dash. Okay. So Okay, so A is a medium jump. Well this is gonna be a a big Okay, I see, I see. Basically, have a, a high jump, a medium jump, and a slide, and a boost. Control always seems, seems pretty. Easy. Oh. I can also slow. Ah, yes, this is how I slow down. But yeah, so far this game seems very in vain with your typical endless runners. Oh, well, oh, alright. Uh, endless runners are usually. Not my type of game, but I, I do see like the appeal of this type of game, and I'm sure there's a market for people who do, want to just, you know, turn on the game like this for a couple of minutes when they're bored, and I'm digging the art style and music, but uh, I could be sitting here playing it for longer, trying to beat my high score, but I think we should be moving on to the next game. Next game on my list is Axolotl, or I guess AK Axolotl. It's another game that caught my attention purely by the art style, so um. Not really sure what I'm getting into, but let's try it. Okay. Top down battle arena. So in this game I presume you're playing as a as an axolotl and shooting rodents and various animals. I have to say I'm really really digging the music. It's a very funny juxtaposition with the cute art style and Small animals shooting each other that you have metal playing. This game gives me serious uh, vibes of uh, that one like old Flash game. Was it Boxhead? Like those. I still remember playing those on, on Newgrounds, just spending our afternoons just trying to beat a high score or play like friends, just either locally or like swapping between rounds. Okay. And just like those games, it gets really hectic once it, gets, once it really gets going. Oh my god, it's... Yep. I think it's tradition for games like this to quickly turn into uh, bullet hell sh shooters. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Uh, everybody ganks until the Axolotl grabs an M4. Uh, okay. You die really quickly. Three hits and you're out. But again, rounds are really quick and... I can definitely see this becoming a very common like pastime game for people who just wanna... Hop on a few rounds when they're... I don't know, maybe waiting for people to load up for another game. The vocals almost like kind of remind me a bit of a uh, of bat metal. I guess if I've ever watched that video, go check it out. <laughs> oh, okay, so see, so invincibility doesn't occur when you dodge. No iframes in this game. S sorry, Dark Souls fans. Oh, hell yeah. Come here. The titular AK for the axolotl. 
is immediately gonna get be replaced by the minigun. The art style really gives me vibes from uh, Enter the Gungeon. Alright, I think I've gotten the, the gist of this game and I could probably play for way more rounds, so let's continue. So the next game I'm going to cover is Alien Scumbags. This game is gonna be a little bit interesting because uh, when I first uh, posted a tweet about making a video on the Steam Games Festival, I actually got a reply from the developer recommending me this game, so uh, shout out to you, good man. Listen up, Megan! We have lost contact with the ship Nostromi. The last communication received was over 48 hours ago, around the same time as the annual Bring Your Kids to Work Day. We need the best, but the best was not available. Laura's making any more T-Rex is extinct, Duke is knee-deep in bacon, and Snake still hasn't found his way out of that damn cardboard box. We need you, Master Chef, with your <laughs> abnormally sized head. Let's make space great again! So already I can tell there's a lot of uh, pop culture references in this title. <laughs> Alright, and uh, a Doom-style... Uh, difficult my boom, difficulty selection. Shoot, and... Eh, at least the vending machine can sustain gunfire. Oh, that's... Sure, I hope that's not a face hugger, right? Oh. I'm kinda digging the lo-fi aesthetic of this. Well, that was an interesting jump sound. <laughs> I can still reload while hiding, that's good to know. Ooh, a shotgun. Hell yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, a lot of these titles remind me of uh, flash games you would normally find on Newgrounds, and I'm, I like that like there are still people who uh, who want to continue with that type of games. All right, let's go down. Okay. They sure move fast. Okay, so definitely, definitely a horror game. This can quickly get quite overwhelming. Oh, da damn chair is in the way. I see. I have totally, definitely, on purpose, opened the exit and not accidentally panicked and pressed the button while trying to reload, trying to clean, well, back into a corner. I'm digging this game so far. Might check it out again in the future, but I think we should move on to the next game because we still have plenty to go. Up next, we have Alisa, The Awakening. This is a very different game than what I've covered on the rest of this roundup. It is a PS1 style, like Resident Evil 1 inspired title, which I think it's a very neat aesthetic to go back to, to the mid 90s, like early 3D graphics. I've never actually played the original, like Resident Evil or the first Silent Hill, but. Oh man. These visuals already, like, give me nostalgia for something I haven't even played. Where am I? And so does the voice acting. And we have tank controls. Uh, I'm already digging this. As you're welcome, you wake up in a strange room wearing a, a maid outfit and you get a gun. But at the same time, I've never been to America, so what do I know? Ah, oh, that is a nice... That is a nice throwback to... Uh, That was a nice throwback to Resident Evil 1, to the very first zombie reveal. It's so cool, I'm having like nostalgia for... Games I haven't even played yet, but I've already like... I've grown, grown up on the, on the franchise that those original games inspired, so it's nice that an indie game returns to that original aesthetic. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. I'm gonna need to check out the full game. This is... I'm uh, like, I'm already predicting. This is... this is pretty cool. Hey, you! <laughs> no! Don't shoot! I can help you, but if you can bring me some tooth wheels, like this one, I might be able to exchange them for some extra firepower. Hey, hey, <laughs> don't fool me, puppet. Uh, I'm just gonna be like fanboying over a lost art of games, basically. I don't even like mind the tank controls, it's all done on purpose. It all serves to like, you know, because it's supposed to be a horror game, or horror themed game at least. Those old Resident Evil titles weren't actually scary. Oh. I saw something down the stairs. Hmm. I 
just said that it's not scary, but that doll crawling around can definitely be a little bit unnerving. And it would not be a Resident Evil inspired title without puzzles. Mm, I started this wrong. It should not be this difficult. Alright, well, I'm not gonna spend all... I'm not gonna spend too much time sitting on one puzzle. I should probably sum it, sum it up at, uh, at some point and get on to the other games. Uh, this is a really, really neat concept. I like that this is even a thing. And I feel like those old-school survival horror games are a really underrated genre. And I can't wait to see more of this game. Now we should probably move on to the other titles. This was Alisa. Okay, I will admit that most of these games have piqued my interest from the art style and most seem to keep me interested by the music. And I'm enjoying it so far. Anyway, the next title is Blood Roots. And it accidentally opened up an external window, which I hope doesn't mess with my recording. This art style looks really familiar. I'm getting like Samurai Jack vibes almost from the, from the painted static backdrops. I can punch. A carrot. I have a carrot weapon. Amazing. I see, the carrot breaks. Find Mr. Black Wolf. Alright. <laughs> Alright, I see. This is gonna be that type of title. Okay, okay, I'm, dig I'm digging it so far, I'm digging it. So it's a high speed brawler almost, and you die in one hit. Okay, and each weapon has... Okay, I see, I see. Each weapon has, like, it's a limited amount of uses. But everything kills in one hit. What's oh, the barrel? I'll beat someone with a wheel. <laughs> okay, I'm really, really digging this one. <gasps> I think this might be Game of Thrones material. Oh, this is really well made. Oh, it, it, it feels so good. It's so like snap and responsive, but also fluid. I don't know. I'm just saying words. It feels good to play. Oh, you can even okay. You can still try other weapons while you're. Okay, you can do that. All right. All right. All right. I feel like we've had a real. Oh, there he is. A real lack of a proper good beat em up games recently, so uh, this is definitely filling a niche that I didn't know I needed to be f to be filled. Okay, here's our target, Mr. Black Wolf. I have an axe now. Oh, it's like that scene at the start, but now it's me doing it. <gasps> no. It's a cycle. Oh, that was a that was a cool twist. Eh. All right, but yeah, this I'm really digging this game so far. It sounds really cool, and I will definitely keep an eye on this one. Okay, the next game on my list is Dorf Romantic or Dorf Romantic, and this one also caught my eye on the store just from the very unique aesthetic and art style. And I, it looks like this one just goes right into a tutorial. Okay, I can move the camera around. Looks like a tile-based, like, city builder or something. But I really like the, the, the hexagon tiles, like, aesthetic. In Dorfromantic, you build landscapes out of hexagonal tiles, yeah? Click on the, one of the empty tiles around your world with your last mouse button to place the tile, the top tile from your tile stack. Okay, so I just immediately uh, go like this. And then I can go, I can rotate them. You can form groups of elements like forests or villages, place tiles next to each other and connect their colored edge to form a, a forest spanning at least five tiles. Ah, uh, okay, so it's like I can make like a group by like connecting them. Yeah, this seems like one of those like calmer titles. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, so it lights up when it connects. Okay, so you have, an, okay, you have an unlimited amount of, okay, it's, it's one of those calm games that you just kind of play around in for a bit, but it still has like... A structure. There is a limit. You don't, you don't just like pointlessly like put things until you get bored. There is a there is a gameplay mechanic to it. 
add at least six additional houses. See, now it's simple, but something's telling me it's gonna get very, very... Or not very, but like, it's gonna get more complicated as it goes on. This quest turned into a closing quest. To complete it, close the field group. Replacing different elements like a forest rises at all of its edges. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need to, like, fill it out. Okay. Ah, I guess if it connects, it, it's worth more. See, see, there, there is depth to this gameplay. But this, like, low file chill aesthetic I'm really digging. I just, I just like games. <laughs> I know it's, it's almost unthinkable. That I can just enjoy games for being games. Every time you play style, you gain points according to how well it fits to its neighbor's edges. Collect 200 points to complete the tutorial. What's my total? Oh, now we just started. Demo tiles placed. Okay, so, okay, yeah. So, so that's my requirement to get 85 tiles. Again, I just can't stress enough over how good, like, the aesthetic of this game is. I'm really, really enjoying it. I, I know I keep saying it, like, over and over again, but... All of these titles have, like, great art styles in their own right. And I don't know if I'm just getting lucky, but all of these seem to, like, fit super well, one after another. Well, most, at least. Man, this, this just keeps on sprawling out. Right, but I, I think I could be sitting here playing this game for way too long, so I'm probably gonna hop on over to the next title, because I've still got a couple more to go through. The next game is Foregone. Uh, I saw on the Steam page that it's a pixel art action platformer, and it has loot, and sometimes that's all you really need to sell somebody on the game. Okay, we were jumping right into it. Uh, oh, this is cool. It's uh, it's clearly pixel art and 2D animation, but it's it has depth. It, it really looks like she's rotating around with each strike. Oh, that's that is that is pretty cool. I wonder if this is going to be like a Metroidvania title. Man, all of these games are like so pretty. Automatically, okay. Uh, there's no aiming. It's just automatic targets. Melee hits restore range. Oh, that was close. So we're in some fallouty ruins, battling, and there's a dodge. Guess it didn't take long for the hero to after the war. It's just like Dark Souls. Nope, oh, no, didn't quite dodge that one there. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this. Activate. Ow, that wasn't very helpful. Oh, oh, is it? It's beginning to sprawl out. I think. Oh, hello. Something stay dead. Change of plans, I suppose. Oh no. Anyway. Okay, easy there, buddy. I need to spin out of control. Now it's even worse. Oh. Stop the hero before you can shoot. The voice acting's pretty good. Oh. Oh back up it. So she's fucking dead. That's what I would have said. Focus on locating Project Hera. If the Arbiter was dead. This, must, this seems like a decent game to, to get into. I'm assuming it's gonna be like a Metroidvania where you kind of get better abilities as you go on. And yeah, return to out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're probably gonna be returning between areas and unlocking more, and there is. Definitely gonna be a story behind it all to like learn how this world probably ended up like this and I see. Soon. Oh. Healing bonus. Heal over time. Okay. Yeah, it's So it's kinda like the healing from Hollow Knight, I guess. Where you have to channel it and you're vulnerable while you're holding it. There's lore. I wonder how long this demo is, because this one goes on for a bit longer than the other ones I've tried so far. Okay, I guess these are like bonfire checkpoints. Just like Dark Souls. Oh, even stronger weapon, okay. And faster. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really digging the animations, the like, the, the pseudo 3D. It's really cool. I wish more games did like that kind of animation. I can- I understand it's probably, like, very difficult, so... I shouldn't be one to talk. Mio's never made a game. Oh, okay, yeah, alright. There's- there's still a lot, so, uh... Ow. 
yeah, uh, this looks like a bit of a long demo, so I'll probably let, uh, leave it here, because I do have other things I need to get through first. But I'll definitely come back to, uh, to finish this later. Up next is Glitchpunk. Now here's a game I've actually heard about before. From what I've gathered, it's uh, a classic top-down action game, sort of in the vein of the old classic 2D GTA titles. Obviously with a cyberpunk aesthetic. I don't know much else besides that, but it's a game I've heard mentioned before, like months before. So I'm kind of excited to check it out on my, on my own. It's loading time sure takes a while. Uh, already dialogue options. And just two di lines of dialogue and we can already be rude to somebody. Nice. It's already starting with a personality test. <laughs> Shed a tear. <laughs> Press F to pay respects. Class D citizen. Oh no, have <laughs> class zero. Well, that's zero points. That's not a very good social credit score. The absolute irony that Texas is considered an illegal immigrant. Anyway, what's going on? I was kind of a bit busy with that joke. So is it like the old GTAs where you go to a phone booth and get a... Oh, no, that performance is a bit... Huh. I guess shift is hacking overview instead of sprinting. This game seems very quiet. Oh, somebody's already getting beaten and killed. I need to kill three unlucky androids. Oh, okay. Yeah, this performance is interesting. What are you looking at? Next unlucky person's here. Job done! <laughs> so I see what the game is going for with the, like, 2D, but, like, rendered in 3D. This visual style of, like, the first two GTA games, but something's really off with the performance. It's not very smooth. I have a stick that I am lightly waving around. Okay, I have some interesting opinions about this driving in that it's not very good to enter the car. Um, I appear to have found myself underneath the map. So this is... this demo is in need of some more testing, I would say. Yeah, I think I'm stuck here. So, um, moving on. The next title is Graven. Now this is a game I've heard quite a lot of people praise it and be excited for it, mainly because of this quite unique aesthetic of like, well, looking like a 90s game, and also the developer uh, being quite well known for their previous title, Ghost Runner, which was very well received. So I'm hoping for a similar, well not similar, Ghost Runner was, a, was an endless runner type, you die in one hit type of game. Graven is clearly different. But I'm still hoping for a same level of quality. I'm going to be honest, I have... A pious man among pious men. I don't know what this game is about. Of the but I saw the screenshots and it looked really interesting. Parallel. You will have to earn your peace. So many games today, they have such good voice acting. Alright, and we're in. Oh my god, that mouse is sensitivity. Am I being like, ferried in... River sticks. Is this like a metaphor for like, like, am I dead already? Also, wow, these visuals. It, it's something, it's like so lo fi, but so good. Okay, if anything, this game is definitely gonna be on top of like atmosphere. Like, oh my god, this is so cool. Honestly, I'm getting serious Half Life 1 intro vibes from this opening. Great. Like a raven in a graveyard. So, I have a staff. I was expecting it to be a magical staff, but it's a bonking stick, apparently. A very effective one at that. Crook's fur. I'll be honest, I kind of read that as crucifix. And again, this game is so pretty. I'm getting, like... Like, Morrowind vibes from this. But also, like, Thief the Dark Project. 
So I have a feeling that this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh. Okay. Hello, just your friendly neighborhood satanic ritual. I see, the staff is only like my basic thing. My main thing is whoosh. But I can't stress this enough. The, the aesthetic is so cool. And the music. Oh, there it is. Indie devs make good and enjoyable experiences. If this was a AAA game, it would basically be the same, but with like 300% more microtransactions. So I'm glad it isn't. I, I picked up a lever. What, did, what, did, it, did it like fall from the ledge? Or. I see. I take it. I'm gonna need one of these. There we go. Oh. Is that a cat? My red barrels. They solve everything in video games. Job done. Now just to find my way back. I have now completed the tutorial mission. I am basically your god and savior. And now we're in the main square. And I am immediately met by a tax collector. Alright. I think that it's gonna be enough for this game. I could probably end up playing it for like hours more because I'm really digging the aesthetic. And I guess general like gameplay level design. It really runs of like 90s to early 2000s. And games like Hexen and Doom and Quake, obviously. But I'm gonna be moving on, because I still have some titles left to go. Moving on, we have Loop Hero. From what I gather from the store page, it kind of looks like a, a pixel art, deck building, dungeon keeper game of sorts. Which sounded quite interesting. Let's see if my assumptions were true. A planning mode or a traveling or adventuring mode? Okay, so it looks like adventure mode is automated. Pay attention to the day progress. Your enemies will appear. So I guess it's not Dungeon Keeper because I'm playing as the hero? Traveling, fighting, most directions are done automatically. The player can't affect them directly. Okay, so what do I do? I can use the cards that are left after defeating enemies to add various new objects to the map. That's what planning mode is for. To remember the land. I see, so I... Ah... So it's kind of like Dungeon Keeper, but I instead make the world for the hero through like remembering the the area. Okay. So I kind of I like create my own adventure for it, I suppose? Okay, that's two kills. Rat Wolf. That did not look like a... The hell's a Rat Wolf? Okay, give me that scimitar. Just like everyone in D&D, replacing the short sword of a scimitar as quickly as possible. I can place it... Oh, I placed it outside of the... Or inside, I guess. And uh, a rock. I see. So I just kind of like make up the world as I go along. I see, so the hero just ventures around in a loop and I just kind of add more details to it. I see. Yep. I, I, made, I made one loop, that's enough for a rest, I suppose. Do I also need to remember the camp? It looks like I do. Oh, I see, it generates new worlds every time. Ah, ah, interesting. So it's kind of like a roguelike, roguelite, where every run is different, or every round, I suppose. Do I keep any of the equipment that I had before? Oh, I guess I don't. And there's a fast forward button. Yes! <laughs> okay, I've made a loop. Or I guess a day has passed. Oh, yeah, I see. So, like, an expedition will take me a day, and every time I go back to camp, it resets the day and all the effects trigger. Okay. 
So I guess I just keep making the adventures like harder and harder for myself by spawning more enemies, but also giving myself buffs to counteract those challenges, I suppose. Vampire Mansion. It's Vampire's the Battles and Edition Tiles. Oh, whoa, 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 game, slow down there, you're adding a lot of stuff. Adds Vampires to Battles and Adjacent Tiles. Erases any established tiles, erases monsters from the road. Ah, okay, so if I make it too hard for myself, I could just delete stuff. Okay. Okay, so basically if I stack up, like, a lot of, like, monsters in that place, then I can put, like, this, so there will be less monsters in that place. Okay. It's a very unique game. I suppose it just continues until I... Oh well, I guess, it, I guess it progresses as long as I want, and then I just gather resources that I take back to camp and upgrade. It's kind of like an endless game. And now I'm finding Dracula. Ignore the slime that's also, like, chilling on the... on the spot. Oh. Why is he... striking that pose? Okay, Dio. I cast aside my humanity! <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, this is like it's gonna be a very long fight. Oh, he's healing after hitting because it bleeds me dry like a vampire. Okay. Can I still place tiles? No. Anyway, I think I get the gist of the game now. I assume this is just kind of gonna continue on like this now. Just until I, f I guess, I feel satisfied with the adventure and in return, upgrade my abilities, get more stuff. I think that's. Enough to understand the basis of the game. I do like the, like the kind of unique reverse dungeon keeper design, and it already feels quite featureful for a demo. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what the full game can offer. So coming up next, we have Narita Boy. That I totally didn't misspell or misread as Naruto Boy at first. Genius me. Uh, this is a game I have actually not heard about before, but I've read a lot of comments of people uh, just hyping up this game. And, and it has a. I said it's, it has its own theme song. Wow. That's kind of cool. I'm digging like the, the 80s aesthetic on this. I guess this is played with only the keyboard. Connecting with Naruto 1. Is this like a Ready Player 1? Kinda like, like themed, I guess. Okay. Hacker man. Well, this looks very interesting. No. Is he gonna get? Zaps into the computer, Tron style. Okay, this looks really, really cool so far. This is really controlled by the hacker knots. The hacker knots. Him and his hacker knots. Alright. Man, this is such a cool, like, aesthetic. Every game like surprises me today. Like all of them have been like pretty good. And definitely, definitely an art style and music. Let's see if it holds up in gameplay. Well, that's quite an animation. All right, I guess we're going full "Hello Sensei" style. Ignore the giant head behind me. Oh, that's not very pleasant on the eyes. Oh. Can I not? There seems to be a bit of a delay with the whole like jumping. It doesn't always respond to a spacebar press. I feel like I'm having a a cuphead moment. Like that polygon journalist, what is this? There we go. That took an embarrassing amount of time. Oh, oh, nope. 
Oh man, this platforming is gonna be... Do I need to jump if and then move to the side? Like, this platforming is really weird. I don't know if it's the controllers or... The controls or what, but... It doesn't perform a jump every time. Oh, I see. It's a double tap to jump. That's... Not very... Elegant. But, okay. Okay, seriously, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, this is probably some of the most unresponsive jumping I've probably ever seen in a game, and... Come on. Mm. I do want to kind of want to get into, like... What the game's actually about, but... Right now the game's really... Playing with me <laughs> with those controls. There's definitely like some problem for responsiveness in this game. Don't know like quite what it might be, but like sometimes it's like double press to interact or to jump. But I don't like I don't know if it's intentional or if it's just some issue. Because moving is like perfectly fine, unless when it is. I'm holding D right now. Yeah, I'm holding A and I'm moving... Something is really weird with the controls. Okay. <sighs> okay, I don't want to give up on the title yet because I am really digging the art style and like the, the theme they're going for with this, but... Gameplay-wise, this needs either a lot of work, or if this is intentional, then... I'm not sure what to say, but, uh... This is getting quite annoying to play, so I think we're gonna be moving on. Yeah, check it out if you dare try this gameplay, but, um... It's weird. It's really weird. Next game on our list is No Place for Bravery. Yep, it's true. Every every game on this list so far has just good music, and I see controller prompt, so I should probably grab a controller for this. Oh, things are jumping right into it. Oh, this is a this is a pretty art style. It's a it's a top down. I guess adventure game or potentially RPG looking at the the consumables on the side and the three bars on the left and an special ability something's telling me this is gonna be similar to Dark Souls oh yep there is a dodge button um it's still alive. Are you gonna notice that he's... Oh, I can execute enemies. Just ignore the, the fact that I did that in front of the child. They need to learn early. The world is a harsh place. And so what if you sometimes have to flay a, a goblin while you're at it? Okay, that's interesting. Somebody built a, a city into a, a corpse of a dead... I guess giant skeleton or something. Oh. Might this be a bonfire? Oh, the enemies have to be executed? Ow. Ow, okay. It's a lot of enemies to, uh... Execute. Do I need to do this for all of them? Do they come back if I don't execute them? Honestly, there are so many on screen that I'm... Not really sure if uh, if they're supposed to be those previous enemies regenerating or if they're just new on spawning. Because if if they're regenerating because they don't execute them, then that's a, that was a mechanic that Prince of Persia: Sense of Time used back in 2003, and then the later games did away with because that was a dumb mechanic. Yeah, this game has had quite the, the the difficulty spike from one goblin that just kind of stood there and took hits to uh to this whole bunch. So 
The game has a really nice art style, even though it's like pixel art and not really detailed. I know I keep giving away that compliment, but I truly do think that these games look really good. Tap at the right time to parry. Okay, so there, there is parrying. Come on. I can use Royal Guard quite effectively in Devil May Cry. I can, I can do this. There we go. That first attempt? Nobody saw that. I'm really digging like the, the kind of like chill and lo-fi like music. Well, I'm on a, a goblin slaying an adventure. Welcome to... To the Dark Souls, but Goblin Slayer video game. With a... I want to say Norse aesthetic? I guess? That's what the music gives me the vibes of. to get used to the Y button being used as a block, which is not very... It's not the most comfortable placement. I'm doing commentary at the same time is interesting. Okay, that's a big sword. And that's a... It's either a very... Well, it's something I'll worry about later. Oh. Yeah. That hurts. Ooh. Okay, yeah, he hits hard. He hits very hard. But so do I! Cleave him in two and get the hammer or... Really out of place lever. Please be a war hammer. And I'm assuming that this hammer will let me smash those blocks. According to the very, very scientific rule of cool. Now where does this lead? Oh. Okay then. Okay, that's probably not very parryable. Or tankable. Jesus, he hits hard. That, was, that wasn't so hard. I can, again, see myself just zoning away and just starting to continue playing and playing, but I've got more games to cover, but I'll definitely keep track of this game's progress, because I am, I am digging of what I've played so far. Up next we have a nice little title called One Dreamer, which from my, what I saw from the store page, it looked like a, a little pixel art game based around coding and manipulating the world by editing the source code. So uh, that sounds like a very unique take for a game, so I am definitely interested seeing as I'm currently taking programming courses in university, so uh, let's see if that helps me at all. People always ask me why I'm making a game, and whether or not I think it's going to be successful. But the truth is, there's something far more important to me. Oh. Frank, are you sure? You really want to settle it this way? 1v1 against me? But whatever, it's your loss. Not my fault you suck. <laughs> Ouch. Frank, take a look at the code, would you? Okay. Classic. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's very simplified. Enable and set that to true. To enable the elevator again. Ouch! Uh, okay, that was um something Frank, seemed kind of off. Whatever we end up naming it, that it's make sure we become the kind of game that's worth the Um, I like I like how there's like an, a console log of everything that's happening. Damn it! Server's down again! This is a pretty cool art style. And all games today, like, have cool art styles, but they're all unique. I like that. Hello, dog. I kinda gives the dog. That's it. I'm getting a real dog. I'm a monster. Oh. 
but why is there so much I can do with the goose? Goose chat. I feel like I'm messing too much. I've I have too much power. I assume this is just all supposed to be set in a game that I'm, I guess, editing with with the NPCs present, which is interesting. Our servers are currently experiencing unexpected issues. We apologize for any inconvenience caused and are working hard to resolve the problem. Play that dog instead. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Much better. Hi everyone. As you all know, this game has been a dream of mine since I was just a kid. When VR was announced, it was as if my destiny was written in the stars. I quit my 3D modeling job, learned how to code, and here we all are. Working on this project has been a dream come true, but I realize now, there's something far more important to me. Which is why I've decided to cancel Isekai VR. Good night, and goodbye my friends. Now, is this in-universe, or is this like a meta-commentary of this game's development? Because if so, that's an interesting, I guess, plot for a game. That's a rowboat. Okay. Okay, I'm digging the music. Is that the demo over? It feels a lot like something you could see in like an anime <laughs> outro, if you know what I mean. Just a still shot of like rowing across a moonlit lake with some somber music playing. Anyway, I guess here we are. Hello. Oh. The last opportunity we'll have for a while. Uh. Come on, Frank. Are you even taking this seriously? The future of our game rests on this paddle match. Warm up. I feel Try like get this... a high score on another game. I feel like this game is uh It's a bit of a, a tragic story hidden behind a, a quirky aesthetic and a fun gameplay loop. So it's extra sad that I kind of have to let it go and move on to the next title. But I did really enjoy it. Up next is a game called Orbital Bullet, which uh, again combines a very cool like 2D sprites and 3D aesthetic. And being like a 360 degree like orbiting like... I guess like almost like a bullet hill or whatever. It really reminded me of like a PS4 launch title. Uh, was it Re Resogun? And I'm sure probably a few people remember, but it really reminded me of that. So I decided to add this game to the list and give it a go. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of digging the style. Oh yeah, the shots should go. Right, of course, they orbit. Because of course they do. It's an it's orbital bullets. It's in the name. Oh, okay, I guess I can I can just jump right on over to the next area. The press of a button. Can I do it anytime? Oh no, I guess it's only when I finish what I had been previously doing. I need to unlearn that I don't need to be like right next to an enemy to shoot him. I can, I can still hit him from like far out because it orbits. Let me take out so I can move on to the next sector. I do like that an animation. It's a very cool scene transition. Search. The oh, I can jump between like the various depths of the level. That really looks like those jump pads and like. A little bit planted, or you could like jump between tiles. Uh, 
Um, now, what button do I press? I hope I didn't lock myself in by doing this. Was this supposed to happen? I hope I hadn't already locked myself out of playing the game. I think I already have a feedback to give. I've managed to lock the game and it keeps jumping back to the first tile. But it doesn't do anything when I press any button. Or it's enter. Right. So was that everything? In this... Nope! It keeps pulling new tricks. Okay. Another game that looks like it could be very addictive for just playing very quick sessions and quick bursts. Okay, but yeah, I feel like I feel like I can get the gist of this game very very quickly. It has a very cool aesthetic. I guess quite of a repetitive soundtrack, but I'm assuming it's something that changes changes with like various levels. But it's also very simple to pick up and play, apart from the kind of obscure button input for the up upgrade stations. Hint, it's enter. Uh, but other than that. Very simple, very very fun, small little title. Worth checking out if you're into that sort of thing. But I'm probably gonna be moving on to the next game. And the next game on our list is Potion Craft. It's... it looks like a medieval... or medieval stylized uh, alchemy simulator. I can't say I know much about alchemy, but I am willing to give this game a shot. You're a novice alchemist wandering the world in a search for destiny. After a long journey you finally find a place to Apply your trade. Let us commence alchemy. I guess I run a potion shop. Take two terrarias and two water blooms. Hey, I know that. I know terraria. That's a game. Add it to the cauldron. Oh, that 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 animation. I like that. <laughs> it corrects itself. I need to stir it. Oh, it's a physics-based game then. Okay, that 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 was cool. I like that, like, visualization on the graph. Of me physically moving the thing around. Heat it up. And... Finish... Potion. It's a weak potion of healing. And I have made... Lettuce, apparently. And add, add it into it. And boil. Okay. It looks like I can't overcook it. Save the recipe. I'm the one for potion chops, so I not only brew but sell potions. Okay. People will come in looking to shop. Yeah, brew potions and sell them to customers. Healing potion. Alright, I offer you this. And I will sell you it for 11 coins. Yes. Medicine. I have this. And I can haggle. Okay. I press haggle when it's in a golden bonus area to improve your terms of the deal. Tips the scale. I'm missing them is the opposite. Those gradually tip out of my favor. Okay. And haggling, leave it. Okay, so okay, yellow to tip the favor, me, and then green to end the. F All right, I see. Okay, so this seems like a pretty simple game. Let's poison. Do you do poison? Go to the garden. Oh Jesus, this is getting complicated. I collect a terraria and a fire bell. Well, it's good that those were the only two things in there, because I probably wouldn't have spotted it just by name alone. Poison. One try and one firewall. Do I grind it? I'll try grinding it. Oh, and this even like shows recipes. Ah, I see. I okay, I get it. Not so much I had to do that. And then cook and weak poison. Okay. Here's poison. Don't use it on people. Seriously, don't. So yeah. This game, you don't need to play it for long to like kind of get what it's going for, but... 
the art style is like really cool and it it's simple just like both to understand from all the like from the, from the I guess graph like visualizing like what you're gonna be making and like through the me actual mechanics of you physically dropping stuff and making it and then you just haggle or sell well I think I've already said everything I <laughs> can say about it cute art style simple gameplay loop fun physics like simulator just doing things by trial and error worth checking out I'd say <laughs> Well, this is certainly a start. Anyway, uh, this game is a uh, Rainbow Laser Disco Dungeon, and that is literally all I know about it. Let's give it a shot before it starts showing me more weird uh, tutorial prompts like that one. Okay, um, I've already found something weird about this. Uh, the controls seem to be horizontally inverted. Also, what the hell is going on? <laughs> oh man, I feel like I'm playing Super Hexagon. These controls are weird. This kind of feels like something you would make in, again, Little Big Planet if you had. I don't know, an acid trip? So, um... Rainbow Laser Disco Dungeon is certainly something. It sure is something. I mean, it's clearly like a very, like, 8-bit dungeon crawler with, um... some really interesting visuals. And really weird controls. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. Go check it out. It's weird. The next demo I'm gonna check out is Shady Knight. Earlier in the video, I mentioned a little title called The Ghost Runner, and that that was the previous game from the developers of Graven. Meanwhile, this, looking at the screenshots appears to literally be Ghost Runner, or at least uh, a different themed version of it, although I could be wrong. Oh, I, we're going right into it. That is a very high field of view and a very sensitive uh, oh, sensitivity. Proof that I'm deadly even without a weapon. Okay, I can kick. Okay, again, I haven't played Ghost Runner, I've only seen some footage of it, but something's telling me that this might have been inspired by it. It just kind of drops into the levels and then expects you to just blow through them. Just, just don't think, run, kick, attack, and don't fault your death. Well, I'm digging it. I, I like some the odd, like, super fast title. I have a weapon now, what can I do? Who do I slay? Still kick. Okay, ah, I see. So grabbing weapons is, it, is it in and of itself uh, a dashing gameplay mechanic. Actually, of course, in a game like this, everything has to do with speed. I like the like simple 3D graphic design. That style rating thing that I didn't notice until now. That really looks like. The style rating for a, fr a certain franchise that I tend to play. Mm. It's at the tip of my tongue. Let's see if I can get a score higher than the dismal, I mean, uh, dull. Okay, this is clearly inspired <laughs> by Devil May Cry. Yeah, this is this is basically Ghost Runner meets Devil May Cry, isn't it? I'm getting the hang of the gameplay now. Crazy. I 
And we got an S ranking. Can we get a triple S? Oh, maybe not quite. Not enough enemies. Okay, quick, yeah, quickly restart. Just in and out, improve your time, improve your performance. Just from the screenshots, I could tell that this was gonna be something in the vein of DMC. Or, sorry, Ghost Runner. But I was not expecting something to have like a style rating and combat more more deep than just kill enemies in one hit and maintain your speed and combo. There is there is depth to this gameplay. Slide and do this to get enough height. Nice. Okay, this is actually really fun. Oh, even though I keep dying at it. It is incredibly high speed. It's simple to be like to make you want to replay it and get better and get better timing, get better scores. Also try to just experiment with the gameplay. I will definitely keep an eye on this game. But it's it's fun. It's fun and it's worth checking out. The next game on the list is Skatebird. And I don't think I've seen a more descriptive title of a game yet so far. It's a skate game and you play as a bird. So skatebird. This game jumps right into a session and doesn't seem to have much of a main menu and it's it's you, you skate as a bird. I I don't know what else to say. Skatebird. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be more like a tech demo or like proof of concept or if it's a proper demo for an upcoming game. But well, I mean, skateboarding it works. You can bail just like the real skate games. It's no skate four, but I guess there's fun to be had if you want to experiment with, with skateboarding and ragdolling around. And you can also, since you're a bird, you can also wing flap. Transfer to the high roof. I assume I need to skate up there. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit just into it by just playing an, an, an actual game about skateboarding again. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's skateboard. You, you skateboard as a bird. There's not much else to be said. The next game on the list is Tanche, or Tanche? Tunch? I don't know. But this game caught my attention because the cover art features Hat Kid from Ahead in Time, and I. Well, I had to download it. I don't know much else about the game, so I'm gonna be going in blindly on this one. Yep, and there, there's Hat Kid. Well, there's three unique characters, but there's Hat Kid, so of course I'm gonna be picking Hat Kid. I'm not quite sure what type of game this is. I'm assuming it's like a side-scroller beat-em-up. It's a really, really cool like cartoon art style. Although I don't know if, if the game has very much in the sense of plot or backstory, I suppose. It even seems to be missing some sort of sound effects, but again, these titles are all still in development or early access, so... Not everything is going to be fully implemented. Yeah, okay, so just defeat enemies, gain bonuses and abilities. And you can also play in co-op. Yeah, a 2.5D side-scrolling beat em up. And you can play as Hat Kid. For some people, that's all you really need to say. I did enjoy a hat in time. Maybe we should make a video on that at some point. Okay, I'll be honest, the game hasn't quite sold me yet. Art style and aesthetic is cool, but there doesn't seem to be much that I'm actually striving towards. Maybe maybe it's a roguelike. Maybe I'm just supposed to keep fighting until I until I fail. I don't know. Oh, also the whole game has a, a bit of an Aztec or Incan or Mayan aesthetic. Okay, there seems to be a bit of a combo system in the game. Like pressing different buttons, I 
the different moves. Quite a lot of different, there's a lot of move variety. And most of these are all, well, all of these are based on actual abilities from Hatem Time, so that's... I should probably pick one of the actual original characters to uh, try out this game with, but... It grabbed my attention by the Hat Kid, so I'm gonna... I'm definitely gonna try out the Hat Kid. I'm not sure if I'm making any progress in this, actually. I think the main thing that was really kind of like a bit of putting out the game at first is just kind of the lack of sound effects. It really is an important part of like what makes a game like feel good to play. I don't think this doesn't feel good. Like it is responsive and everything, but there's like not much feedback to moves. But yeah, it's definitely a game that looks like it'll be more interesting to check out with friends. As I've said multiple times now, really just saw this interesting because of because of Hat Kid. And I'm sure there's gonna be more people trying it out just because of that crossover. But on its own, I don't think it's much of a game for me. It might still be worth a try if you're into that sort of thing. But for me, I think that's enough to get a good taste of what type of game this is. Moving on. Next on the list, we have a little title known as You Suck at Parking. This is a game I've actually seen before. Uh, I'm pretty sure various like test builds were shared by the developer on Reddit before, and I'm glad to actually finally get to try out the game for myself. Now the core concept is basically you learn how to park. The challenge comes from this being a physics-based title, and you have to park by just letting off the acceler accelerate. As far as I know, you don't break. You just have to dash and hope for the best that you'll hit the parking spot. And you have a limited timer. So I'm sure at, at higher levels this game just kind of becomes a shot in the dark of just guessing and flinging yourself until it works. This game has a really cool aesthetic of like miniature models and a very simple gameplay loop of just moving around with the directional keys. I'm pretty sure you can't even actually uh, drive backwards. Yes, the S key does not do anything. You can just drive forward and that's all. And it's get, it gets more challenging. Like many others, it's suited for just short bursts of like goofing around and playing around with the physics and seeing what you can do with it. Honestly, I would also say that this is a game that would like work quite well on like smartphone devices. But I'm sure there's probably either a version being worked on that is from a mobile, or there's somebody who's definitely thinking of that idea already. I'm trying to concentrate on commenting and on parking because this is a timed challenge, and the vehicles are very floaty. It is a fun gameplay experience, but although it's arcade, it's definitely it can definitely be challenging. I'm sure you've already figured out what the gimmick of this is, and well, yeah, there's not really much more to it than this. But what can I say? It's just very fun, like very cute, like visuals and very simple, fun gameplay. So definitely worth checking out. And thus, we have reached the final and definitely the most, well, the most well-known and highest profile game on our entire list, Little Nightmares 2. This is a series I have not actually played before, but I have heard of the title. And this, I, I suppose it doesn't really constitute as a indie game, because it's published by Bandai Namco. Nevertheless, it is part of the Steam Games Festival and there is a demo available, so I will count it on the list. And it's put right here at the very end. And thus we awaken in a hallway. A very, very long hallway. That is a very pretty game. Now the other games might have been good in art style or art direction, but this is just... these are just some quality visuals. I've got a shoe, a very large shoe. And ignore the... bag of bodies, just kinda, you know... Hanging there. You know, it's, it's normal in this land of little nightmares. I 
some simple physics puzzles. Like so far, this reminds me a lot of like games from. Um, I don't remember the studio right now, but Limbo and Inside. This has a very like Limbo feel. Well, that's symbolism. I guess it's time to take a leap of faith. Running start. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Ah, right, it's a 3D game, so I need to check everywhere. And grab the stick from it. And I can use it to disarm traps. Alright. Apparently even a stick is too much for me to care. I see it. I see. I see that bear trap. Clear as day. Okay, so there were a couple of more. And it's a very quiet and melancholic like almost game, but... Super pretty. I wonder how long this demo is. Hope it doesn't end up being so long that I could probably make a single video on just this demo alone. Yeah, you know what, I'm good. Okay, this is some definitely not something a child should wield. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's a funny little cop out there game. I imagine being on the other side of the door right now, you hear an axe scraping against the floorboards, creaking towards you. And what do you see? A little... well... A small little creature in a paper bag. Holy shit, I am the horror movie monster in this scenario. Where is he going? Come back here. I mean, come on, I only chased you with an axe for a little bit, right? Huh. Okay, that's a bit unnerving. Hey, if that kid's leaving the house... Don't mind me, let me join you. Man, this game has some really interesting, uh, really interesting uh, visual depictions and symbolism. Especially since it's like generally like stylized as like a kids game, well, ish. I guess it's a kids game in the same vein that Coraline can be described as a children's movie. I'm sure she will definitely not flinch when I try to pull this out. Or she'll just rip, because it's a figurine. Oh, well, this is um, quite the view. Jesus. Yo, holy shit, he dead.
is he gonna turn around? Uh. Alright, this was probably the longest demo and the most, like, well, I guess, fulfilled, like, com complete, I guess the sort for it, but this is, yeah, this is the most clearly a demo for a product that's all but finished. Anyway, I think that's enough for those titles, and I think it's time to conclude this. And that is about it. Those are all the demos that I got to play from the festival. Links to the respective store pages can be found in the description below. Sorry that this video ended up being so long, I really wanted to give each title a couple of minutes in the spotlight, and even then, I only managed to cover like a fraction of all the demos available in the Steam Festival. For me, the five definitive standouts in no particular order were Alisa, Bloodroots, Graven, No Place for Bravery, and Shady Knight. Let me know in the comments which title you found to be the most interesting, or if there's any games that I missed and you think that more people deserve to play them. Just as a quick reminder, the games festival lasts until February 9th, so go check it out if you haven't already. I'm hoping to have another video out before the end of the month, fingers crossed, but for now, good night and goodbye.